So with the conclusion of Ubers versus Bastard Munin coming closer and closer, we're left with one more game for us in the Neo Egoist League, PXG versus Bastard Munin. With PXG consisting of fan favorite characters like Shido, Rin, Loki, and Nanase, I'm just kidding, nobody cares about Nanase, but with those players alone, this makes it one of the most hyped up matches in the NEL, and maybe even Blue Lock in general. The fact there's rivalries for almost every character on both sides, the return of characters we haven't seen in a while, and we're taking some of the best characters and putting it against our newly developed MC, this game has so much potential. So I'm going to be breaking down what we should expect in this match, what I want to see in this match, and maybe some predictions about what will actually happen. I think everyone has been waiting for this match against PXG since the Neo Egoist League started, so let's jump straight into it. It. First major thing I think will play a super huge role in the PXG match, of course, Kunigami's rematch against Shido Ryusei. So this rivalry dates all the way back to the second selection. You guys already know by now, everyone thought Kunigami was eliminated just to have a huge comeback in the Neo Egoist League. Alright, nobody believes that sentence of huge comeback, but this creates a lot of buildup to the eventual matchup against Shido and PXG. Of course, we'll talk about the wild card and his backstory in a little bit, but let's first talk about Kunigami's performance. Kunigami, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions as well, just isn't performing the best and because he's performing the best in these games that means we're gonna have to see him improve exponentially to go against probably the most stacked team in the nel whether this means an op power up a new weapon or maybe just actually contributing to the team we're bound for some kunigami buffs because no way is he beating shido rin and loki with how he is right now so we'll 100 see that but now what do i think will happen to kunigami my personal theory is that we'll see some of the results of the egoist 4 training way back in chapter 213 and the reason why i mentioned this is of course our boy isagi I think this training session was really significant not only to Isagi, but to Kunigami, Chigiri, and Batra. And since Isagi got a whole new weapon just from this training session alone, the rest of them have to get something as well. Talking specifically about their 1v1, Shido will also improve in their downtime before the match, so Kunigami definitely needs some major buffs to go against him. Maybe something along the lines of some sort of spatial awareness. It would be cool since Isagi got Kunigami's signature in the lefty, and Kunigami will get Isagi's signature. Obviously not on the same scale as my GOAT, but something to help him move upfield since that seems to be a struggle. Maybe he'll specifically match up with players he can win a 1v1 against in physique and stamina, and just finding out the best possible route to the goal box where he can use his other weapons, the ambidextrous legs. I think we'll also get to see Kunigami's journey through the wild card and what shaped him to be this independent lone wolf striker. Technically, Ego didn't make him into this, but Shido sends him down this path if that makes sense, so we'll obviously see him wanting to get his revenge or resenting him, which just hypes up the eventual 1v1. I don't want to go too in-depth with the wild card as I'm going to make another video on it, just update predictions or last minute predictions but a little callback to one of my first videos i do think kunigami eliminating team z is the most likely theory for the wild card and i'm really hyped for this i'm 99 sure they'll show it during the pxg game or maybe before it either way it's just creating hype for the pxg match and speaking of hype for pxg let's talk about the next hype thing that i think a lot of people are overlooking the use of metavision with PXG having a lot of smart players, I think Rin and Karasi will get it, and we'll get to see a battle of metavisions, because each of them have a metavision counterpart, that being Isagi and also Hiyori. And then on Bastard's side, how will the use of metavision stop absolute weapons, like Shido and Loki? As we saw before, even Rin who could read where Loki was going from his spatial awareness, he still gapped him with godspeed. So it'll be super cool to see how Isagi and the boys will end up countering Loki, like what plan or players they'll use to counter or mark him. Maybe we'll get to see Raichi go in there, or Isagi just uses a specific formation. I don't know, I personally just think that's super hype. And if they do figure out a counter to absolute weapons, that'll change the rest of the series drastically in my opinion. It gives them an actual shot of beating world-class talents or players, and we know they got steamrolled from the World 5, so that's why I say this game changes everything. And on the topic of change, we'll see a lot of other characters besides Kunigami getting a lot of development, specifically Tokimitsu and Zontetsu. Tokimitsu and Zontetsu are probably the characters with the most untapped potential in the series so far, just because of their lack of development. With Zontetsu having the same weapon as Loki and explosive acceleration, there's no doubt Loki is going to pick him up as a protege or just teach him how to use his weapon like him. Maybe we'll get to see Zontetsu go against Corona, for example, since PXG seems to be hyping up 1v1s and rivalries, and they're both pretty fast. And with Tokimitsu, of course, his biggest problem is his confidence, so if Loki can help him become more confident in his weapon, weapons, it'll be super dangerous. I say it every single time, Tokimitsu resembles Adam Blake, and I think his playstyle will be really resembling of him. But putting my own theory into this, I personally
honestly think Tokimitsu will have a split personality, kind of like Zenitsu from Demon Slayer. When Tokimitsu gets the ball, he'll be able to be full confident and just steamroll through the team using his physique, speed, and stamina, but his character is still known for that unconfident trope, so this will be a perfect way to tackle it. And just imagine in the game, Toki receives a loose ball, goes from unconfident to super confident, and just steamrolls through Bastard. I swear I'm cooking with this. We'll also get to see Loki, who we haven't seen in a while. I just have to cover this world-class level player. He wasn't even actually trying against the Blue Lock boys, so maybe we'll get to see him try or enter the flow state for the first time. The thought of that alone is really crazy. Like someone who made the Blue Lock boys look like a game of teachers playing against the students. Try hard? It doesn't sound fair. My analogies are bad as ever, but with the implementation of Tokimitsu and Zantetsu, and also PXG being the last game we'll see in the Neo Egoist League, the arc will come to an end, and that means one thing, our final Japan U20 team. My most previous video was on that topic, so if you want to see me go more in depth with that, check out this video after this one, and you might as well hit the sub button while you're there. We're almost at 10k, and that's absolutely crazy. I can't thank you guys enough. Even in the blue lock draw, I'm trying as hard as I can to make some fire content for y'all, but 10k during it is actually nuts. Thank y'all so much for the support and everything. I literally can't believe it. Going back on topic though, this game will literally decide everything from the starting team to the substitutions, the final salary rankings and of course our starting striker god that is going to be so hype i personally cannot wait for this so let's hop right into the theory starting striker in my opinion has like five to six debates of course our boy isagi another top contender being rin the best standalone striker in shido the best performing in the nel in baro and just to throw out one more the dark horse kunigami let's start with isagi now i do think he is at peak performance literally comparing to kaiser when it comes to keeping up with the game reading it and just nel performance in general but i do think he kind of lacks in the scoring compartment something kaiser has over him kaiser with kaiser impact obviously makes him the starting striker for bastard munin and that's really the only difference between the two to be honest i know they try to compensate that with isagi having lefty direct but i don't know isagi will always be a smart player rather than a goal scorer i know that's what separates him from other strikers the fact that he doesn't have these weapons and is still able to score i think that's how the future plot of blue lock is gonna go but that's a debate for another day talking about scoring capability rin in my opinion will always be a top contender when it comes to the best player in blue lock with insane feats everywhere from offense to midfield to defense and his scoring capability and kicking is better than isagi's especially in that one glimpse we got of pxg it seemed to improve even more so honestly he'll still be my top pick but then on the other side, you got even better scorers in Shido. And if you have a whole team supporting him, of course, he's going to deliver just like he did with Sai in the U20. Like I said earlier, Shido will also improve in his time in PXG, maybe even becoming more team reliant or having an even better absolute weapon. I genuinely don't know. I don't have any theories regarding him. If you guys do, let me know in the comment section below. If we're talking about the whole team supporting you, though, we also have to mention Baro, who has scored currently five out of six goals in the game he's played. I'm unsure if he played in the PXG match, but nobody has done that. The only person remotely close is Rin with two out of three goals. So it's a tight debate between those four. My personal theory for all of them, though, is that we'll have a striker selection before the U20. So they'll try and compete and try to devour each other to see who's the best in the striker position. Maybe they'll try and fight over control of the team. Like Isagi can use his brains to utilize everyone fairly. Baro will utilize everyone for the sake of his goals. And Shida will say some zesty stuff. Before we get to the Dark Horse pick, though, literally the Dark Horse, Kunigami may be taking the striker position. I know this sounds far-fetched, I know everyone is really disappointed with the performance so far, but he has scored two goals, he just doesn't have that much of an influence over a team as someone like Baro. But I think that will change come time for PXG, because he's bound to score a goal this match, we all know it. And three goals is pretty good. I'm really putting high hopes on Kunigami, it's literally all betting that he'll perform, and if he doesn't, I swear I'm gonna look like the biggest clown. But with all that development and untapped character potential, it seems like he'll get his chance to shine. So if he does score in PXG, my theory will have more evidence behind it that he can compete for the strike position like i said earlier he'll maybe learn a new weapon that'll put him up for debate between the others it's super exciting to see all of this unfold which is why this game is one of the most hype moments in the nel all the rivalries characters we haven't seen and the fact that this game is really unpredictable makes it a game everyone is waiting for this game for sure will affect the future of blue lock so buckle in boys because it'll be a crazy ride and i'm all for it this video was a little bit of a theory a little bit of a discussion and a little bit of information a little bit of everything but i want to know what you guys think will pxg live up to the hype Thought on any of the theories or maybe your takes on them match predictions anything just leave a comment down below y'all always cook with the pxg predictions and i always love to hear them on stream join that as well every friday from 10 to 11 a.m pst that being said though that wraps it up for this video thanks for watching to the end if you're still here again thank you guys so much for the endless support i love y'all my name's hario and i'll see you guys next one